the truth is what made us sincere if you would so we have this unleavened bread of sincerity and of truth any questions so far okay so verse nine uh he goes on to say i wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people okay I wrote to you in my epistle. <laughs> uh, apparently, there's a lost epistle to the Corinthians that we don't have. Uh, I do not believe that there's anything in that epistle uh, that that uh, that we uh, that we need that we don't have somewhere else. Okay. I, in other words, I believe we have all the truth we need. Uh, Jude says that in Jude verse three. Uh, but he had written to them before, and he said, don't keep company with sexually immoral people. Uh, in the marginal reading of, of the Bible I'm using, this uh, New King James, it uh, says the word, it's not keep company, it could be not associate. And uh, the literal meaning of the word is don't mix together. You know how when you uh, when you when you approve of people, when you come to them, you may give them a big hug, you may pat them on the back, you know, you may you you want to, to tell them about your life, what's going on with you, and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but when you don't approve of them, you won't do that. You'll stand away from them. You ever if you've ever seen anybody that's really done something bad wrong, you'll you'll physically see people draw back when they come into the room. They, they'll just back up. They don't want to be around that, that guy or that gal, as the case may be. Uh, <clears throat> so we cannot associate with sexually immoral people. But now watch Paul, because what's he talking about? He's talking about the church. He's not talking about living in the world. And that's what he goes on to say. Yet, I certainly did not mean with the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. Now, think back just a minute to Jesus' prayer, John 17, and see if Paul is not following much the same line that the Lord followed in his prayer about the, uh, the apostles and, and us, for that matter. Uh, verse 11 of John 17. Now, I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, uh, keep through your name those who you have given to me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But now... I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Okay, here's an illustration I was given one time. I don't even know who gave it to me. If you're going fishing, you want the boat in the water, but you don't want the water in the boat. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. We've got to live in the world, but we don't want the, to let the world live in us. So here's Paul, and he's saying, I. <clears throat> I'm not saying that you Corinthian brethren should not associate with all these various sinners who are in the world. He said, I'm talking about the church. So now he's going on, verse 11. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a viler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Now, we're back to Andre's question a while ago. Can you eat? If your son has moved out of the house and he's not faithful to God and he's been withdrawn from by the church, 
Can you eat a meal with him? It looks like you shouldn't do that. Now, it's a different story if it's your wife or your husband. I'm going to keep saying that. There are obligations in the, in the, in the marital relationship you cannot avoid. And chapter seven is going to talk about those. But when it's a grown child who has gone off into sin, the church withdrawn from them, they need to know you don't approve of what they're doing. They need to feel the sting of not being a part of that great family called the church. And that's what Paul, is, it seems to me, uh, in large manner, ma matter uh, way, is talking about, really. Uh, he's, he's letting them know, this is how we're going to let this guy know uh, that, or this gal, know that they are not, they're not what they ought to be. And the church has got to, got to help them, got to deal with them, uh, or try at least. Okay, so verse 12, four, what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. So we, we got an assignment. Are we to judge the world? No. Who's going to judge the world? God will. <laughs> That's the easy answer. God's going to judge the world. And we don't have that job. Uh, but uh, we, do, we do have the job of judging our fellow Christians. And I'm talking about as the church as a whole, not an individual. This is not the role of one Christian who's appointed themselves as judge and jury for every Christian who might stumble. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the whole church sees the sin. They try to convince the man or the woman to come back, to be faithful again. When they don't do it, we would draw from them. Why? We're trying to save their soul. That's what we're doing. Okay. So, uh, Paul completes his, his discussion by, by telling uh, the Christians that they must withdraw from uh, the sinful person so that he feels the pain, or if you would, the weight of his sin. All right.